Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Real Life with Mike. Uh, I finally got my GoPro 9 back so I can start doing some filming and of course the boat is gone, it's starting to get cooler. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of boats out there left, it's pretty much the end of the season for that. There is some hardcore guys that are gonna, gonna go till uh, they're pretty much bumping ice. But with that all in mind, uh, I thought I'd do a little video today on how I converted the classic Big Buddy uh, heater to run off a USB charger. So basically with that, um, this fan or this model does come with the internal fan. There is a whole bunch of different videos that you can look at on how to install your own fan and stuff like that as well. But uh, this is the one that comes with, I don't know if you can see it there. It actually does come with the switch. And when I open it all up, I'll show you the internal fan on how they do that as well. So most of these you can use. There is a little plug and port over here or you can power with batteries as well. The hard part with the batteries is the fact that they really don't last all that long. And I mean, who wants to carry a whole bunch of batteries and, and waste them all the time? Most time when you're ice camping, you don't really have a plug in to plug the big buddy in either. So basically I'm gonna be using a power pack. So the battery pack I'm gonna be using is this Helix, Helix? Yeah, Helix uh, battery pack. It is a tw uh, 20,000 mAh which is quite big for these battery packs. This one's for the size of it is actually really small. Now, most battery packs come with like maybe a four or five, maybe a 10,000 uh, uh, milliamp hour. This one's a 20,000 milliamp hour. And like I said, for the, the size of it, this thing usually lasts a good day and a half, almost two days running this um, internal fan by itself. I'll go a little bit into the the wattages and stuff like that, that's um, with the internal fan that's built in as well, uh, as soon as I take it all apart here. All right, so as you can see, there are four uh, four screws that you have to take off. This bottom panel has to kind of pull out and up. You can slide the whole panel right out. So of course, this is what the inside of the uh, Big Buddy uh, heater looks like. There's really not much to it. Of course, it has a whole bunch of heat baffles. There is some uh, spots here to get some airflow. The good thing about this, and a lot of people are wondering, do the fans make a lot of a difference? They actually can. So what it does is, of course, because they have ventilation holes from the bottom, this fan actually starts to suck the cold air from, from underneath, pushes it through the, I guess, kind of like heat exchanger, and then it actually will go off the top. So it's not like you're just blowing the hot air from the top of the, the fan out. You're actually sucking that cold air from the bottom. So it does actually, I notice a huge difference. Uh, maybe not a huge difference, but it is quite noticeable when you're in the tent overnight having the fan on. So, I say with that uh, back panel off, you can see the, the internal fan that's in here. Like I said, some of the models don't come with this internal fan. The easiest way to take a look at is, does it have the switch on top? And that's all factory uh, or it comes from factory as well. Uh, but I have seen some units that actually do have the switch, but don't have the fan. Um, like I said previously, there is some other videos that you could probably look on uh, on YouTube and stuff like that, how to actually put like a computer fan in here. Um, because I'm lucky enough to have this model, I'm just gonna show you how to attach it to a battery pack. So on here, if you can see it all, I'm not sure if you can or read it on there, uh, that's a six volt uh, DC plug-in that you can put in here, as well as you can use, uh, like say four batteries, I think they're D-sized batteries, but uh, 1.5 volts per battery, of course, times four is gonna be six volts. So this fan is gonna be running off six volts uh, on a regular basis. That's what they run it off factory. The only unfortunate thing about going with the USB power, support, uh, power supply is the fact that these only put off five volts. So you are gonna lose a little bit of power. It's not gonna spin as fast, but I mean, if anything else, you're gonna get a little bit of less wear and tear. Um, I still notice that the fan spins quite uh, quite good and the, the airflow is really good. So once I get this all hooked up, I'll show you the air movement on here as well. All right, so next step is all you really need is this USB power supply. It could be from an old plug-in, something that has, you know, the, the typical I, uh, iPhone or uh, iPhone jack that has that, that damaged end on it. You basically cut that off. There is gonna be four wires. Usually it's a red, a black, a green, a white, and then a shielded cable. Uh, all you really need is the red and black on there. So you can strip it back down, get rid of all the other wires, and uh, I'm just gonna heat shrink this to make it look a little bit cleaner. There, that's a little bit better there. I'm not sure how well, how well you can see that, but like I said, all you really need is that uh, red and black wire sticking out. 
So on the uh, back panel here, you're gonna notice there's on the battery pack here, there's gonna be a green wire and a black wire that has two wires attached into it. Now, what I would like to do is replace these two, um, these two connectors here with new connectors, but just attach the power cord to this. The reason why I wanna do that is because in case if all of a sudden I do wanna go battery pack or anything else, I can still use this completely as factory or I could use the upgraded uh, USB power supply. So we'll cut these off um, and attach everything back. So it is always nice to uh, either mark or take a picture to remember which one is which. The top one is the green one, the bottom one is the black one. So top's gonna be power source, bottom one's gonna be ground. Now, what I usually do is I just take my USB cable here, I'll attach the uh, red wire to the green wire, kind of tighten that all up, and of course block to block. Use some new uh, connectors. All right, so now that I have my two connectors on here, of course, the black connector will go on the bottom of it. The red connector, or uh, red and green connector, will go on the top. That's basically it. Now my fan's gonna be able to be powered with a power bank. Just to give you a little look on here, of course I just have my power bank, plug my USB in there, Move the fan all the way. Flip the switch. And I don't know if you can hear um, hear the fan at all on the camera at all, but uh, it definitely does put out some pretty good air. So, like I said, I don't know the difference uh, in RPM that's going to change between the five volt battery pack to the six volt plug-in, or if you use a six volt uh, volt rechargeable battery. But I mean, for the five uh, five volt, it seems to push a lot of air. And the good thing is I have a couple of these battery packs laying around and like I said, two of these will last usually a good weekend of having this running 24 hours a day. So now all I have to do is basically, just turn this off, basically just take this USB uh, cable. Uh, I'm probably gonna secure it underneath uh, so that way I can go through one of the holes on the, the big buddy here and I'll show you that in a second. All right, so one trick that I usually do and I mean, because I'm not gonna be using this, this battery pack, I actually take the USB line, I put it through the battery pack, the hole in the, uh, the battery pack section here, just right there. And then from inside, so it's kind of hard to get this all on camera here. The reason why I wanna do that is because I'm gonna loop this around this spring, the old battery pack spring. There we go. Not sure if you can see it in there. I basically just looped it around this spring so that way, this cable coming out to my battery pack here, even if it's tugged, won't come off of my, my connectors here. So you could always tape it on, you could find another place to secure it. Um, I was gonna drill a hole here and actually put a little bit of a zip tie here, but I don't know, I mean, this could get really hot as well and I'm trying to keep the wires away from, uh, from the heat shield. So I thought this would just be a, a simple, easy solution. Now with that done, like I say, on the inside of this, you can see the three holes, the ventilation holes. I'm just going to line this up, put this, I'm gonna put it through the bottom hole. And like I said, the only reason I'm putting it through the bottom hole is I'm trying to keep it as far away from the heat shield as possible. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna cause any issues with that as all at all. I actually have had this hooked up for three years uh, this way. I actually just took it all apart so I could do this video and I'm redoing it. So this isn't gonna be a trial and error. This has been running like this for three years. I don't have any um, issues or any melting or anything on these cords. With all this being done, 
I still have to do the typical disclaimer. Be cautious when you do this. Make sure you know what you're doing when you're doing this because of the fact that you can easily uh, easily screw up or cause more issues when you're, you know, with your fan or you could damage your fan if you're not doing it correctly. Um, you know, just be cautious. Do a little bit of research. Check out other videos. I'm not saying mine's the best, but this is the way I did mine. So with that wire all connected and kind of jammed in there, of course you take your top, goes through the upper, kind of sets down. And clips back on. So now that that's all clipped on, uh, all we have to do is screw it back together. And there we go. Now, technically, if you did put a battery in your, your battery slot here as well, this still will be able to move and still will be, be able to accept it. Now, eventually it could cause damage to your USB wire. But like I said, I'm really never planning on using these D batteries. So in general, that can click on. Never gonna have to worry about that. Like I said, the other good thing about having the USB power supply the way I hooked it up is eventually if you ever did want to use a regular plug-in for your power supply, you can still use that and not affect um, your connection for your USB. So, open up the side panel. Now the reason why I did it on this side as well, uh, like put the USB through that side, is I usually use a quick connect for my other side to run both, uh, you know, the, the both heaters. You can run individual tanks, one on each side as well. One here. One here. But because this is the one that has my, my quick disconnect, I don't want my USB power supply here. Said I never use one pound bottles on here because of course when I'm using this, it's usually for a long period of time and I use a 20 pound tank. So this way, what I do is, just back a bit, take my power supply, tuck it in there, close the door, now you don't have to worry about it. Now all you have to do is flip the switch and you got some fan. All right, so there you have it. Pretty simple install. Uh, like, as you can see, all it is is hooking up that USB, the black wire to the black on the battery compartment, the green attaches to the red on the USB, you attach that to the upper part of the battery compartment and you have a, a spot that you can now power your fan with a power bank. Now everything's all attached. All you have to do is your switch here. You turn it on, that's it. Now you don't have to worry about changing batteries or having a power supply. Now, it's a little bit hard to show. I have, I'm gonna hold this about a foot away. And as you can see, it's blowing pretty well. Turn it off. And it stops. So it does blow pretty well. Um, it does have some good airflow. And when I hold it away, I can hold about two to three feet away from the actual fan and still feel the air movement. So like I said, the best thing about having the power supply or the the actual fan on, on these big, big buddy heaters is it actually will suck the cold air from below, bring it up to the top and heat it through the heat exchanger or, or heater core, I guess you could call it. Um, and through the ventilation. So it's not just gonna help push this hot air up, it's also gonna help suck that cold air down and, and convert that heat. So there's a whole bunch of different YouTube videos and stuff that you can check out as well to do the exact same thing. Feel free to check them out. There's a whole bunch of different options and different ways to do so as well. Um, this is just the way I did it. And hopefully it helps you guys out to power your fan as well. Like I said, a lot of uh, these units don't, especially when you're in Canada, a lot of these units don't come with that built-in fan. So that's something to check out before you go and buy all this stuff or, you know, uh, kind of convert yours as well. Uh, if you don't have a fan, check out the YouTube videos because of course there is ones that you can actually install computer fans or, or you can actually buy, I believe you can buy the module off Amazon or eBay as well. Um, not too sure. Like I said, I just was lucky enough to be able to get one of these. So. Uh, hopefully you like the video. Hopefully this is going to help you to keep your shacks a little bit warmer. 
I started this YouTube channel in summer. I really made this channel more for the winter aspect of it as well. Uh, me and Callie go on a lot of uh, overnight excursions on the ice. We did, I think, 14 weekends on the ice uh, uh, last year. So, I mean, stay tuned for a lot of uh, ice camping videos. We have our whole setup. We have beds. We have the whole flooring set in. We have the heaters, how we have our finders and stuff hooked up. So, when it starts to get ice season, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on overnights as well. So, like I said, hopefully this will help you guys keep your tents a little bit warmer. It's a pretty simple install. And like I said, if you have any other questions, feel free to write a comment below and I'll keep an eye on them and try to answer them as good as I can. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe. I do a lot of finicky, uh, you know, uh, little projects here and there to, to kind of make my life easier on the ice as well. And like I said, this has been done a million times. I just thought I would do it for, you know, my subscribers or anyone else that's new, uh, especially in the Manitoba region that hasn't hasn't done this or haven't heard of it, this is definitely an option that you can do. It makes it work a lot better. So with that all being said, thanks for watching. Like I said, uh, I really appreciate all the comments and support that you guys have been giving me. And uh, stay tuned for future videos. But until we catch you again, keep it real.